Players over the years have achieved millions upon millions of items, but never has anyone gotten 1 billion. However, today, that will change. I will be obtaining nearly 250,000 double chests of items in under 30 days. So with this daunting task ahead of me, I started up the world. Whoa, that's a village just right there. And after making my home in one of the houses, I began getting important early game items like wood and stone. However, a lot of these items were underground, so I decided to go into the mines. Okay, and one full mining trip later, this is what I got. Pretty good haul of stuff. And I even got myself full iron armor, full set of tools, and some more smelting right there. But at this point, it had gotten extremely late, and it was time for me to go to bed. This concluded the end of day one, with a total of 1,700 148 items, which is not bad by any means, but by this time I'd ideally have over 33 million. But this is okay. I have a plan to get around this in the future. However, right now I need to focus on the present. So, on day two, I kicked it into high gear and started getting a villager breeder set up to then make a training hall, which will add some security if I were to lose everything. Only problem is the training hall took a lot longer than expected, as in four days longer. But once again, that is okay. So I've been a bit busy. Basically, I did a lot of gaming with uh, villagers, and uh, here we are. Now, the only thing left to do is pretty much enchant everything. And after combining for a little bit, now I can put all this stuff on. Quickly, just throw away all my iron garbage, put on some diamond stuff, and all of a sudden... I'm looking pretty good. Okay, okay. Now that I have myself some good armor and tools, I need to fight the dragon for one reason and one reason only. Shulker boxes. You see, if I plan on storing one billion items, I need to store them in a dense manner. And this is where shulker boxes come into play, because they can easily store 1,700 items and only take up one slot in a chest. And because of this property, I spent day five obtaining all the eyes of Ender and went off to fight the Ender dragon. Oh! Okay, so it came out of the ground. All right, and I guess, let's go. Oh God, this is actually not that bad of a spawn. And now we begin the process of murdering the Ender Dragon. Oh, come on. Hey, cool, I pearled to him and killed him. The dragon was slain, but that does not matter. It's time to find some shulker shells. And after venturing around the end for nearly an hour, I found my first end city. Here we are. Oh man, there's the Elytra, yes. Oh, I've been yearning for this thing for so long. Okay, put on the amazing Elytra. Oh, it's been so hard playing without it. And now I take flight. Oh, thank God I can fly now. Okay, okay, let's go back to shulker boxes for a second because there is a massive problem here. How many shulker shells do you even need to store one billion items? Well, let's do some math, shall we? If we divide one billion by 1,728, which is how many items a shulker stores, we get the impossibly large number of 600,000 shulker boxes, or nearly 1.2 million shells. So this brings up another question. How in the world are we going to get 1.2 million shulker shells? Well, my answer is Project Lionfish. This project is a combination of four different farms designed by ending credits that when combined create roughly 9,000 shulker shells per hour. This means we can get all 1.2 million shells in only five and a half days. One problem with this idea, though, I need a lot of iron for minecarts, so we're going to need an iron farm. So it's uh, about day eight and a half, um, and this is the iron farm done. I have catered about 36 hours, I'd say. And, whoa, I clicked on the right chest immediately. Um, okay, so this entire storage system I made here is almost filled up. That's pretty nice, actually. Not a bad haul. However, I think I need to actually start working on, like, the shulker farm now, because that's important. Okay, so here are the materials for one of the shulker farms, and I need, what, four of these? Okay, so just one glance at this material list made me very worried. Look, I was not expecting to need this much stuff. However, after hours of collecting bamboo, string, and stone, I eventually obtained everything. This is all the stuff we're going to need to build all four of the shulker farms, and this was... Very, very annoying to get, let me tell you. But we have it, and that's what matters. The only thing left in the completion process of the shulker farm is right now is literally throwing it all together. So I guess, uh, cue some music. It's time to build. 
three hours later and the first farm was built. However, this didn't come with some problems. After I inputted a shulker into the farm to actually make it work, it just teleported to the top and then just stopped doing anything. This stopped me for like an hour until I just gave up and messaged ending credits, to which he suggested just healing the shulker. Okay, I have melon now to heal the shulker. And let's finally fix this stupid shulker farm. It's been like an hour of deep- Oh! I see. Uh, I have no idea why it works now. I literally did nothing. But regardless, 1.2 million shells won't get themselves. With the shulker farms being done, the only thing left to do is run them for five and a half days. Problem is, we are only on day 10, and we only have around 60,000 items, which means we are over 300 million items in the hole. However, I have three ideas on how to fix this massive issue. Idea number one would be two massive basalt farms designed by my friend Lintex, which would produce around 3.4 million items per hour, giving us 1 billion items in around 12 days. The downside here is the farms are incredibly laggy and expensive. Idea number two is the complete opposite. It's just 300 rail dupers absolutely gaming at around 3.2 million items per hour. However, this is way too cheaty for my liking. Thankfully, this is where idea number three comes in. I really like tree farms, and lucky for me, they can actually be used to get an insane amount of items very fast. There is one in particular designed by Floppy Donkey, which produces 461,000 logs per hour. But the thing is, that is obviously slower than the other two methods. However, it's actually much faster faster. You see, one log can turn into four planks, and four planks can turn into eight sticks, which means those 461,000 logs suddenly turn into over 3.7 million items per hour, practically thrashing the other two by 300k. This also means we can get all the items in only 11 days, and given how we're on day 10 right now, we'd be able to get this done with time to spare. However, this one's flaw is much bigger than the other two. It's almost impossible to craft that much stuff, unless if I were to make a script to do that craft for me. Problem though, I have no coding ability, but I have friends who do, one of whom being upside down. I approached him with this weird crafting idea, and a few days later, I got this. Dude, this thing is really cool. <laughs> um, it takes four stacks of logs outside those choker box and instantly crafts them into like 16 stacks of sticks. This is really, really cool, actually. Thank you so much, Upside Down. This is awesome. With this overarching plan, we could technically get all 1 billion items by day 22, which would be ideal. However, I don't think that will be possible. We don't have enough materials to build it, and even with our shulker farm, iron farm, and builder trading hall, we're still kind of poor. The only way to deal with getting these items is spending forever grinding them out or making farms for them. Unfortunately, we don't have forever to grind them, so with this in mind, I began with the slime farm, mining out a chunk in the middle of an ocean in order to mitigate nearby caves. I then brought over beehives to create a honey farm and set up an alt account there so I could mine redstone whilst AFK. The reality is no time can be wasted because if something does go wrong, that time will become valuable much later on. I've never spent so long gathering this much stuff. I mean, there's a lot here, and it's all going towards one farm, one singular farm. And speaking of, now it's actually a good time to show you where we're going to build it. So we're around... 1300 blocks out from our base and this is where we're gonna build the tree farm We also are going to have the storage for the tree farm here as well But that's a problem for future me. The only thing really left to do is start building this thing It's going to be a huge undertaking, but yeah, hopefully I can get it done pretty fast Okay, so I just finished like the core of the farm and I'm wondering if it works now because I haven't really checked it. So uh, let's see if it works. It should be as simple as just fast clicking these two blocks. That looked good, except for this right here. And this log needs to be moved down. Oh, and that's broken up there. After fixing these three problems, I continued on building the farm. Okay, and with that, the entire farm is finished. And I'm pretty curious to see if this entire thing actually works. I already placed a few saplings right here. The only thing I need to do is turn it on. And I guess bone meal it, so... Hoping for the best. It looks like everything was done. Yeah, you can see logs falling. If we go down here, yes, we can actually see some logs. Nice. Also, I let the shoulder farms run as I was building the tree farm. And I think now we have... Whoa. 250 thousand shells so yeah each double chest and hopper is around a hundred thousand that's two plus this so we, we have around 250 thousand shells 
That's awesome. But going back to the tree farm, it works, but not all is well. We kind of need bone meal to like run the farm, and uh, I seem to have completely forgotten about that. You'd think after designing countless tree farms, I would remember bone meal, but no. Thankfully, about a month ago, a friend of mine named Monica, otherwise known as Hexatron, released the perfect farm to fix this issue. Introducing Chromos, a small cube of bone meal production, with one module being capable of making 2,000 bone meal per hour, which is great until you look at the bigger picture. <coughs> I, I did some calculations, right? And uh, we need 36 of these modules to run the farm. And uh, that, that doesn't come cheap. I suppose it's back to mining and chopping for the next few hours. Words cannot begin to describe how annoying it has been to get all of these items. Thankfully though, I've officially gotten all of them. But uh, yeah, I guess starting now, the bone meal farm is about to be made. <sighs> and with that, I began building the bone meal farm nearby. As I did this, the reality of collecting one billion items set in. Okay, so I finished the bone meal farm, and uh, it's time to see if it works. I already loaded it up with some bone meal, so I hope that everything goes well. That sounds good. Well, that looks good. <gasps> bone meal! Yes! Oh, this thing's actually working. Oh my god. With the entire tree farm section done, we begin the real challenge. We are now on day 15, but that isn't the problem. No, that is a mere afterthought compared to what we must do next. Design and build a storage that can handle 1 billion items without crashing everything. To understand why this is challenging, you need to first learn how a Minecraft world works. It is split up into many different sections called regions, each one being around 500 by 500 blocks. And each of these regions can only store a certain amount of information before just resetting. As an example, let's say you built a massive structure in a single region file, and you suddenly place, let's say, 1 billion items in the middle of said structure. The region file will will become overloaded with information, and suddenly your build, the storage, and literally everything in that area just goes back to being untouched. Regular terrain. The thing is that this exact thing will happen if we are not careful. I have one idea I'm hoping will work, which I'll tell you when we cross that bridge. But for right now, the storage needs to be designed. So right here is a 1 million items, and this solid chunk would be a 100 million items. And finally... Whoa. One billion items in chests. Okay, so now that the main chest hall is laid out, we need to focus on converting the logs from the tree farm into sticks. And I've been at this for a few hours, as you can tell. Okay, so basically, this sorting system right here bundles the spruce logs into uh, shulker boxes. Then they appear right here, where the stick crafter will craft them into sticks. And the sticks will kind of be thrown off into this water stream that'll lead into more shulker box loaders. These loaders will fill up with sticks and uh, eventually, hopefully, end up in the storage system. That's the the plan anyway. This system is perfect except for one thing. Shulker boxes take up one slot in a chest, and if we want to store um, about 600,000 shulker boxes, we're going to need double the amount of storage. We're gonna need two sets of this entire thing. So my solution to that problem? Being lazy and forcing the bot upside down made to also craft shulker boxes. This way we can store them in a very dense manner. Okay, yeah. This is not great, but it works, so I don't care. Basically what this does is when this entire array of chests run out of shulker boxes, it'll send a signal up here to this bot right here. And this bot is basically told, hey, I want you to craft a ton of shulker boxes. So what it does is it'll just take out an entire shulker box of shells, and half a shulker of chests, and basically convert that into shulker boxes, which will then feed into this chest array, restocking all the shulker loaders. So with every system in place, it's time for the first test. Okay, it's 1 a.m. right now. If this doesn't work, I'm just gonna go to bed. I really hope this thing works. Oh, look at that shulker. <gasps> oh my god, he's crafting sh Yes, that's actually working. Oh, nice. It's actually working. Let me check the chest. Oh my god. We're actually getting sticks. It's actually working. Ah, oh, that's awesome. And with that, day 15 was concluded. Now that it is day 16 and the storage system works, it's time to begin gathering materials so we can build it in survival. This includes getting a lot of chests. Remember, we need roughly 600,000 shulker boxes. Each box takes one chest, so that coupled with hoppers and the rest of the storage system means we need 650,000 chests or roughly 1.3 million logs. So to get all the wood 
needed, we can actually just run the spruce farm for like three hours. And I already built the shulker loaders for the farm, which eventually just feed into here. And after a while, I had all 1.3 million logs needed. So I began crafting the chests. So you guys remember all that wood? Um, they're all right here. <laughs> the sad part is all of this is going directly towards shulker boxes. And something even more crazy, 663,000 chests crafted. Whilst I was doing that, we also got all 1.2 million shells from the shulker farm. So with both of those things being finished, it's time to focus on the rest of the storage system. So here's the material list for the storage system. And we can ignore chests, thankfully, but everything else is actually not too bad. I mean, the only hard part is getting all the redstone for the observers and comparators and stuff. But other than that, this is actually doable. The first big thing to work on is hoppers. Thankfully, we built an iron farm way back on day six, and that's been running this entire time. So we surprisingly have all the resources we need to craft 11,000 hoppers. As for the other redstone components, I'm broken that department. So into the mines I go. Now that I have all the redstone, it's time to focus on the rest. So here's all of the materials we're gonna need. All the gray is hoppers, all the green is chests, and the rest is just miscellaneous stuff. Now that we have all the materials needed, it's time to place over 30,000 blocks. One catch though, it's now day 17, which on the outside looks like we have plenty of time. However, you need to remember, 11 of the 13 days we have left goes directly to AFKing. So realistically, we have two days to build this massive structure and bug fix it. That isn't a lot of time. Okay, so I placed the schematic for all the storage systems system and this is quite staggering actually oh god i have a big project ahead of me so i began placing blocks faster than i've ever placed them before with the deadline looming over my head as well as the thought of the entire region being reduced to nothing i was incredibly stressed out if i didn't build the storage fast enough every hour i've spent every block i've placed and every ounce of planning i've put into this project would be for nothing regardless of these thoughts i chugged on and eventually oh my god i think this is the last block. <sighs> oh god. Okay, here we go. The end game. All of these chests are actually here. They just are not rendering in. Yeah, it's currently 4 a.m. Of, of day. I don't even know what day. I think it's day 18. I'm gonna go to bed. Tomorrow, the plan is to bug fix it and start running it. I'm starting to think this will actually be possible. I'm too tired to celebrate though. So in the afternoon of day 18, I made a copy of the world file that I eventually used for testing the storage system. Because if the storage broke in the actual world, I wouldn't have enough time to fix it. So with that in mind, I started testing and I continued to do so for nearly eight hours until I had a full list of problems. All of which were quite simple to implement. Now the only thing left to do was run it in survival. Okay, everything is turned on. It all worked in the separate world. Hey, we're getting logs. Wow, sticks are crafting. If a shulker box full of sticks shows up right here, it works. My anxiety was building. The more I waited, the more hope I lost. There's nothing. I don't think it works. After this realization, I walked off to compose myself. However, when I returned... <gasps> it actually works! Oh my god. Oh. It's actually working. We're actually going to get 1 billion items. <laughs> Let's go. With the storage system fully functional, everything was finally starting to look good. Now there was only two things left to do. Run this wild device for 11 days and hope for the best. The first five days went perfectly. We were nearing 500 million items and we were on track until I woke up on the morning of day 24. Um, so the farm just randomly stopped. That's not good. Yeah, this this farm has stopped. Okay, uh, I need to set this back up immediately. Oh my god. Okay, yeah, you're back up and running. That's good. Upon further research, this break occurred only an hour prior to me noticing, so not much progress was lost, which meant this was recoverable. However, this also set my anxiety into high gear. Okay, it is now exactly day 30. I really hope we have all the items, man. Okay, let me log on to the server. Okay. Whoa. That's a good sign. The farm is still running. Okay, I just turned the farms off. I'm also pretty surprised to see it hasn't reset. 
That must mean we built it in the corner of four different region files. Okay, uh, enough, enough stalling. I need to see if we have a billion items. That's 100 million. That's 200 million. That's 300 million. 400 million? Okay, we at least have 800 million items. What about 900? 900 million? The last chest is over here. It's full. Wait, what about this top chest? Oh my god. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. Uh, we got 1 billion items. <laughs> oh my god. We did it. We got 1 billion items in Minecraft in under 30 days. I can't believe it. <laughs> Regardless, thank you Kronos for hosting this world and thank you for watching. Consider clicking on this video next. Anyways, bye bye